Hello there, welcome to this tutorial on I've Got the World on a String, focusing primarily on what it means to lay down a song, and I'll tell you what it means. If you know the chords in the right order with the right structure, you can lay down a piece of music. It refers primarily to the chords, not the melody, and not improvising on top, because the melody and the improvisation can't exist if you don't know what chord you're playing next, because you're, you're going to be stumbling over yourself. There's going to be too much conscious interference and you're not going to play fluently. So this video is going to show you my process on how I got to this point when I started the record button um, and all the brain work that took place away from the piano for about half an hour or so so that you can then either learn this song or any other song that you might want to learn using the same kind of idea. So what I'm going to do for the first time right now is play it and see how well I know the chords. I've fiddled around with the melody for just a few minutes now so I have an idea of the melody, but I'm primarily focusing uh, on the chords. The melody is very easy to work out exactly. That takes no time. So let's see what happens. Key of F, and then I'll talk about my description box uh, and a few other things, and we'll get on with the video, which shouldn't become too long. <laughs> So I know it. Now how do I know that? Most jazz pieces are based on the same chord progression, so when you're learning a jazz song, you're only really learning the melody, because the chords are 99% of the time coming from a, let's say, a database, a bank, of regular chord sequences. So once you've learned, you know, it's like a cheat, once you've learned just a few sequences, five or six of them, they apply to almost any jazz song, and pop song of course, that you want to be able to play. This song uses the uh, 6 2 five, one progression, tiny, tiny modification where it goes to the 4, but that's also very common, going up a 4th and having intervals of 4 in a jazz piece, or pop, but primarily jazz, is very, very common. So there's nothing unusual about this piece. So that's why it was very quick and easy for me to learn, as it will be for you. So key of F, look at the description box below, have a link to my uh, Google Drive. In there you'll find the lead sheet for this piece. Uh, just go to it, right click, press download, it's alphabetical order, and um, have a look if you want. I'm going to simplify this, but if you want to have a look at the more complicated chords which are on the sheet, feel free to, and maybe ask a question if you don't understand a particular chord symbol, happy to help. Um, but very basically, what happens here? This is very basically, forget about the melody, you'll learn the melody passively, you can just listen to that, work it out, it's very, very easy, or read the sheet music of course. But the chords here, so that you can play it very fluidly, away from the piano if you can, once the video is done of course, go away and practice or practice with another piece of music. Uh, I, I want to take the, the chord, I'm looking for patterns, regular patterns, and the first one I spotted here was how it goes F, semitone drop to D, D is the uh, sixth of F, uh, you must know your major scales of course, but anyone who's a subscriber to this channel is already a major scale master. So it's going to go F for two beats, for D for two beats, and then it's going to the two, so that's six, two, very, uh, very, very common. But then instead of going five, you can, it doesn't sound too bad if you do literally go six, two, five, C7, one. doesn't sound too bad, I'll just do that. Uh -oh. And then you go back to F. It's not terrible, but it sounds a bit nicer because the music actually says B flat minus sixth, if I remember correctly. And that, if you put the G on the bottom, 
not on the top, that is one note away from the G minor that you're already playing. So why not just make the D the D flat and then you're technically playing B flat minor, there's the 5, there's the 6. So you might want to maybe just play a bass note to establish the B flat key for that chord. G minor 7 here, you might want to just go B flat in the left hand and then stay with that G minor 7 shape with what you might call a flat 5 in the key of G but we're technically in the key of B flat for this chord so it's the minor um, and uh, that just helps you so let me just get to that point and now it's going to go 1 up to the 4, now you can play that as a simple B flat 7, but it's nice to play it a bit more advanced. A B flat 13 with a 9 sounds quite nice. 13th chord voicing, dominant 7, you know the key of B flat, so it's easy. Dominant 7, put the 9 here, why not? Is it the, uh, because it's, it's sitting under a redundant finger that can press it, so why not? The 9 works with everything. 3 in the middle, so dominant 7, 9 in brackets if you want. 3 in the middle and here's the 13 which is also the 6. 7 and 6 make 13. Do the maths in your head and you'll find that it's true. So it might, so you'll go 1 up to the 4 which is very very common, up a 4th. Then it's going to go 3 I'm just playing, well A minor 7, I'm just playing it in this inversion because it's the nearest, it's a comfortable inversion but you can play it anywhere. A minor 7 which is 3 D7 which is 6 G minor 7 is 2, C7 is 5, F is 1. So this song is literally 1, 6, 2, then go to the uh, the 4 if you want, but make it with a flat 5. So in other words, 2, and then, well, 2 minus 7 is implied, and then 2 with a flat 5. There's one note difference, very easy to remember. Put a B flat in the bass if you want. That's easy to remember because it's just a fourth up. So it'd be that would be one, six, two, four, or one, six, two. Then stay on the two, but just make it flat five. Back to one, up a fourth again if you want to do it again. If you, if you didn't the previous time, you must go to B flat next. So one. So that's the first section. One, six, two, two with a flat five. And then that's the first section. One six two four or one six two two with a flat five. And then one four three six. That's very, very common. One four three six. And after the three six it's gonna go two five one. But it goes two five two five one. If even if you write this down in numbers for the pen, just very simply, one six two two with a flat five. Um and then one, four, three, six, two, five, two, five, one. That's it. You could do that in any key. So let's just reinforce that we know those chords. Uh, so one, two. Uh, sorry, I'm saying two is in the second chord, but I mean chord six in the in the sequence. So one, six, two, with a flat five, or consider it the fourth as a minus six, as a minor as a minor sixth chord. And then back to one, upper fourth to the B flat, three. I'm playing an A minor seven inversion here. Same thing, both hands. Six, which is D, and then two, G minor seven, C seven is the fifth, and then again, G minor seven is the two, C seven is the fifth, and then one. I mean, that really could not be easier. I, I, I'm almost tempted to write down on some paper uh, these numbers and I think I will actually, just to highlight my point, if you don't mind. Um, so I would do this uh, in my mind, but I'm doing it here on paper. I'll just go, oh, okay, fine, so it's just going one. I'm not doing it in Roman numerals, I'm just writing normal numbers to be very simple here. One, six, two, then two with that flat, fi with that, um, flat five. I'm writing it very simply here. But I know, I know that in the key of F, it's F. D7, you can put the extension if you want, put a 7 there, 2 is a minor 7, 2 again, 
is a minus 7 with a flat 5. I know it should be Roman numerals, I know that of course. I'm just writing it in a very raw way because this is kind of what's happening in my head. So that's the first part. 6, 2, that goes to the flat 5. And then it's just going to go 1, which is F, up to the 4, which is B flat, but I'm doing it as a 13, so I'll just put a little 13 next to it. Um, and then it's going to go 3, which is minus 7. Uh, 6, which is a dominant 7, again. The 6 in this song is always dominant 7. Often it's minus 7, but this one it's a dominant 7. It's a happier sound when you play a 6 as a dominant 7, not a minus 7, like it should be. Um, so that's, that's when it goes... Then it's going to go two. Oh, then it's going to go two five, two five twice. Two five. Of course, the two is a minus seven. The five is a seven. That's obvious. And then back to one again. That I mean, that's kind of what's happening in my mind. So now I might just have that there, and I could do that in any key. But we're in the key of F. Well, I'll just play the chords. Ba dum ba dum ba dum bum. to one, up a fourth, three, seven, two, five, two, five, one. Now that's quite easy. Now the next part, when it goes, it, it stays on one. You see, if it's in your internal jukebox, you know how it goes, so it's easier. When you get to the next part, this is sort of part one, next part's part two, the structure is one, one, two, one. Could be easier. Um, is my autofocus on? Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn that off. So this time it's going to go 7. Well, well, first of all, you play 1 because it goes Life is a beautiful thing. That's with the 1. Then it goes Life is a beautiful thing onto the 7. That's simply a minor 7, which is uh, not usual. I'm doing this in very quick letters. Of course, the 7 in modal theory would be a half diminished. This, this song is not following the modal theory too closely, so it's going to go bomb. So it's going to go. That's the seven because it's an E minor seven, and then that goes to three. How surprising! Which is a, uh, a seven, and there's a little. You can. I'm, I'm putting in brackets here a plus. Plus means augmented. This is, I know this is very low quality. I'm just doing it to give you an idea of how quickly you can do it yourself. Um, so there is, how do you say it, there is order in my chaos. <laughs> um, the plus means augmented. Augmented means sharpen the fifth one semitone. And that happens on the A, which is the three. Key of F here, of course. So that's when it goes... So that's on the F. It goes to the seven, E. Then to three, which is A. So th the fifth, the E, is raised an E sharp, which is an F note, but it's an E sharp. When you hear it on your internal jukebox, you'll know that that's what happens in most versions. You can hear that. Um, there's that sharpened fifth sound in there. You don't have to do it, but you know it is implied that you should do that. And then it's going to go to six, which again is a dominant seven. Very easy there. And then it goes to the 2, but it's actually a dominant 7 here. So you'll have to kind of remember, I don't really know what, maybe you could just put a capital M and a 3 maybe to remind yourself that it's a major third first, because of course 2 is a minor 7 normally. But on this particular one it actually goes to the major third interval first, then it goes to the minor, which is a common thing to happen. The 2 is a major third and then it becomes a, a regular minor. So then you, can, then you can put 2 as a minor 7, uh, and then 5 of course is C, and back to the beginning again. I mean that's it, that's the song, and you can do that in your head. But all of this is very, very common. This, this could be 100 songs. Okay, 1, 6, 2, 5, or 1, 6, 2, and then up a fourth to the minor 6th, or 1, 6, 2, then stay on the 2 but make it a flat 5. These are common things. 1, up a fourth, very common, 3, 6, 2, 5 most common thing in the world. Seven is I suppose are quite unusual when it goes one to seven, but just remember that. One to the seven, three, six, two as a major third, two regularly, back to five, which is a dominant seven of course. Um it couldn't be easier than this.
and you can do this with any song. So you have to find these patterns. So instead of being overwhelmed by, oh, it says F and there's a B flat here and there's an A minor 7 there and there's a D7 there and there's, just see it as numbers because it, all, the, all the pieces that you're ever learning are just simply numbers. So now you want to confirm that you know all these, walk around your apartment, go out driving, sit on the bus, live your life for a day if you want, and then keep saying to yourself, hear it on your internal jukebox, because you know it on your internal jukebox, that really is the first thing before anything, it's on your internal jukebox, and you're going to hear it, okay, okay, one, bum, six, two, and there's that flat five, back to one, up a fourth, three, six, two, five, two, five, one, and you can hear it in your mind. You're going to come to the piano, and you're going to go, oh, okay, okay, let me just, I can do this, ba -dum, ba -dum, up to six, two, and I'm going to flat the five, back to one, up a fourth, to the three, six, two, five, two, five, one. Then you would have a little turnaround after that one, because it does go one, six, two, five, because it's called a turnaround, and that helps you get back to the beginning. So you go one, uh, six, two, five, start again. Seven, three, with the augmented, six, to the th to the two, but a major third. I'm playing a thirteenth in the left hand, up to the minor, well not up to, but into a minor seven, C seven to the five. You can just play around with it. So now I know that. I know the piece. It's impossible to really forget that. I might have to check it every few days or a few weeks, but I kind of know the song now. Um, it, if you can't lay down the piece, you can't play the melody and you can't improvise on it. So really do try to get the song on your internal jukebox, learn the words, if there are any, then look at the score identify the patterns, you'll find they're very, 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 very common. Then wander around and live your life going over those chords as numbers um, with your internal jukebox, so you're putting sort of step one and five together. Then go to the piano. The melody is secondary. Improvising is tertiary, let's say. Um, and you'll be quite amazed how easy it is when you go to the piano and actually play it. Hopefully that that's I mean it's it really is that easy. There's nothing else to really say really. Hopefully you can now play the song and apply what I've talked about to any other song. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my books and blog, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best and bye for now.